mentor, Billy Williams, who was uh, one of my teachers at the film school, taught me early on on a lighting workshop, which I've never forgotten. It's very simple and kind of obvious, but it was just trust your eyes, not the light meter. Mm, I remember mm. that. And it was kind of a revelation because when I was starting and it was all on film, and I, but you still use, I still use meters now and, and waveforms. But we were lighting a, a, a scene in a house, it was a location lighting workshop, and I was, we were shooting on 50 ASA film inside on 60 mil, and I was going pretty low key. And I was learning to use the spot meter, which I love, you know, because I read Ansel Adams, the negative, and I was going zonal system, I was, I'm going to do all this. And I was looking through, and the meter kept saying E, you know, <laughs> for you know, under couldn't read anything, it was error. And uh, I said, Billy, what do I do? And he said, you know, shouldn't I put more light in until I've got a reading? And Billy said, well, why? I said, well, you know, it's saying E, don't worry about what the meter says, what does it look like? I said, well, it looks fine. He said, well, let's shoot it and look at it tomorrow in the cinema and we'll see. So I shot it, looked at it in the cinema the next day and it was brilliant. It's absolutely what I wanted, absolutely what I'd seen. And it was like a ping moment in a light bulb going, ah, so I'm not ruled by the light meter there, and A, they're kind of a guide, but if it says E, that doesn't mean you can't shoot. And I think, you know, with, with waveforms, some, you know, sometimes a dip saying, oh, the waveform's all very down, low down. I said, yeah, but it looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks good, but the waveform's all very, very low. Let's shoot, it'll be fine. It's frightening how, yeah. how frequently the light meter says E. It says E a lot. <laughs> I don't, yeah. E, U, and e, you go, well, under. well, it looks good. It you looks, know. But I think that's, the, that's a simple it's one. Good. Trust your eye and your instinct rather than the equipment. I think the simplest bit of advice I was ever given was the cameraman I worked with uh, as an assistant to him. And he just said, he wasn't, he wasn't saying it at me, but he was saying when you're, if you become a cinematographer, he said, if you, if you don't like the setup, he said, just take the camera up or take the camera down or take the camera two feet that way or two feet that way and see if it makes it any better. And that was really quite simple, you know, because you look at it and you go, something not right here, what can I do? And if you actually move the camera slightly, you go, oh, I can now see that archway down there, oh, you know, whatever. There was a great bit of advice that, in fact, you actually told me this about, yeah, about 10 years ago. And it's, um, and it's something that, quite frankly, should be compulsory for any cinematographer. When you're lighting an actor, stand where the actor is going to stand and stand on that spot, feel where the camera is going to be and also feel where the lights are coming from. And, and a lot of the time you can, you can see the problems, you know, a, around you. If you actually stand on that spot and you can feel how the actor's interacting with the light. And I've, I've kind of never actually really forgotten that. I think it's... Uh, I'm on it. It's a great bit of yeah. advice, yeah. I was lucky enough to be a crew member on a, a film with John Seal and after uh, like four, four months working together we were having a drink one evening and, um, and his bit of advice is very similar to, to what you were saying Gavin was um, the only thing you need to be a cinematographer is a light meter and an opinion and a light meter is not all that important so he then went on to say you know if the light meter says 2.8 that doesn't necessarily mean that it's good if you haven't if you haven't done the opinion bit, then it all falls apart. Engage your personal interaction with the actor, with the set, with the, all of that stuff. And then, you know, if it says E, it's probably going to be okay. I was working with John uh, ages ago um, and watching him work and I, I had a bit of repetition. I still do it now and I'm sure I thought it was just me, but I actually found out it's everyone, is, which is like last minute I'll be looking through the camera and then I'll just run out and move the light. or I just I'll, and the, and the you can see the sparks going around tightening everything, so I'll just move over something down, that'll yeah. obviously over tighten, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm an inveterate kind of for tweaking and faffing last minute. And I saw John do exactly that. He was on the camera, and he was looking through. Yeah. It's this big, big show. Yeah. And I think it was even running, it was on film, and he ran out and kind of just moved about like ran out. Oh, he does it too, yeah. you know, it's like, it's it. And, he, and also, he always uses the, the jib arm, mm. and it's just so that he can constant, basically be making those adjustments. Yeah. So it's on a jib arm instead of a, an, an on a dolly on a track. So he uses the dolly like a gigantic slider and the jib arm, you know, like a little mini crane. And so, you yeah, know, during the course of the, and always on a, mm-hmm. you know, a camera on a four to one zoom He'd or, a, you know, zoom, yeah, yeah. and it'd be like the yeah, 21, 17, 20, you yeah. know. At film school, Stuart Harris once said, you know, if, 
if someone's knocked a light, well, he used the example of the tea lady coming on set, which I don't think we really have anymore. But he said, you know, if they've knocked a light, then rather than, you know, immediately getting up in arms and thinking you need to relight, just look at it because it might well have improved your lighting. You know, you might plot in a lot of things and actually you, you like almost like lighting by subtraction that actually when you lose them, you realise that's what you've, that's, you know, just keep looking rather than having a preconceived idea about how it should look. That was, yeah. that was very, actually Nestor Mendros said that in, right, in his book, yeah. Man, with the, Man with the Camera, I think it was. Yeah. Absolutely right. And I think it's a, it's a really key one because you sometimes, this, sometimes can, someone can knock into a light and, and it's better. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, really. think, and oh, it's bouncing now. The, happy, the happy accident. The happy accident. So, and, I, and I think it's actually not immediately exactly right reacting to that, but actually taking a look. And if it is, you know, if it's, if it's not quite right or not quite what you asked for, you can correct it, but have a look at it first. Yeah, exactly. I've no idea why, but I know have an image of Brian Tofano as a tea lady <laughs> going around the, 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 film, school, yeah, exactly. the, the film school knocking things nice into the correct <laughs> position and wandering yeah. off mid Stuart Harris anecdote kind of thing. A piece of advice that a mentor has given me, knowing to a sensible degree everyone else's job on set, if you're going to ask an electrician or a gaffer to move a certain bit of kit or rig a certain bit of kit, you have to have an understanding of of approximately how long that's going to take and that you're asking for something that is actually reasonable. And safety is something which is also massively overlooked. I just finished a, uh, a picture over in um, Louisiana where nothing is below ground. There's no cables below ground. They're all rigged on pylons. And a lot of the time you find yourself want, you know, wanting to put, a, or you want to put a lamp there and it's within uh, an arcing distance of high voltage cables and and it's 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 almost like shooting in venice uh, it's you know you want to put a light somewhere and you can't you need to appreciate everyone else's job i think um and, and that was a wonderful bit of advice that was given to me by by my mentors i think that a cinematographer should also learn or, or have a basic understanding of editing because when you block a scene you should know through instinct, how long the duration of a shot's going to be, and and it, it, you know you should be able to roughly dictate the cuts. It should be an open dialogue with the director, and and it, even though you can see the final edit and it's completely you know it might be completely different, but you should understand at what points close-ups are going to be used and what points wides are going to be used. And I think that especially with today's schedules, I think that they can actually help you be a more efficient and uh, and also more creative. Thank you.